Hello, and welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, I've, well, I've bought a new outfit, I've gotten myself a Rowlet, and an Oshawott from Professor Lampton in his laboratory back in Jubilee Village. I've caught the Distortion Pokemon, and now I'm ready to take on Cresselia in Mu Moonview Arena. Well, I still need to level my team, but I have caught quite a few Pokemon. So, Cresselia is quite special, as you need to be aware that your controls are reversed. It's not that hard, though. As soon as you're able to uh, focus on it, you can just th start throwing sticky globs. If it's stunned, it'll stop the reversion effect. And with one Ultra Ball, we are able to catch the Moon Pokémon. And obtain the Jet Blade? Isn't that for Ghost or Dark types? Dark types, yeah. Hmm. You get some kind of blade from it. Hmm. Well. Well, not bad. I will go back to the settlement and tell the others about the feathers. Plate of Moon of Urine. Two more plates to find. So, the last legendary Pokemon, for now, is in Snowpoint Temple. Regigigas. Hmm. Sorry, I was just finishing a cookie. As you can see, I made a lot of money through something, because I caught a lot of Pokemon. And I'm just gonna go back to Jubilee Village and over to the Alabaster Islands. I can show you some of the Pokemon I caught, and I'm gonna make a team of the Pokemon I like most. Mm, up we go. The space-time distortions are pretty annoying. You have to leave your switch on and look at the game every five minutes. Alright. I've caught quite a few Pokemon, actually. Um, after Heatran was caught, and the 3 experts. well, I did that on stream, I got a Rodon, a Bronzor and Bronzong from the Highlands, they have Lucario from the Icelands, Two scissors from the Icelands, which are quite good. A Duot, also from the Icelands, despite not needing that really. Raichu and Tangrove from a distortion. Kulava and Cyndaquil from the Mylands. Porygon, which is a distortion exclusive, as well as Magnemite and Magneton. Some other Pokemon that were just added for fun. Mantike for the Seas Legends event. Psyduck. A bunch of Magikarp for some reason because they discovered that if you ride on Basque Legion and you jump and then throw a Pokeball, everything slows down because it's hard to aim. Three Scan Tanks, so I have that already. So I'd have that already. Stunky, Hippopotas, and Hippowdon. I already had those technically, but whatever. An Alpha Steelax from, I think, the Highlands. Haunter, an Alpha Badoo, and an Alpha Luxray. A level 82 Alpha Decidui from her distortion. Cranidos and definitely one of my favorite fossil Pokemon, Rampardos. Though Rampardos is very bad, normal, normal competitive Pokemon, it's good in casual play. Shield on, a Mike Mortar, and two Rowlets. That's a lot of stuff, sure. But realistically, we're gonna need to prepare a good team for the final fight, uh, for some fights later on. Mm, especially the one against Kamado. His team is pretty strong, and while that Flosion can hold its own, it's nowhere near enough. I also collected some satchels in order to just, uh, you know, have enough merit points. Oh wait. And I also leveled up my uh, Rowlet and Oshawott to level 41 and 42 respectively. 
so that I could evolve them and uh, train and evolve them in order to get their Pokedex entries done as soon as possible. I will complete um, Oshawott and Rowlet in this video, most likely. Oh! Alpha Chain Mako. Okay. Typhlosion is quite strong. His special attack is stronger than normal Typhlosions, and Ghost Stab covers a lot of Pokemon that resist fire. Something like rock and I don't know what else resists fire. Fire is a pretty good typing offensively and defensively for some reason. Like, I don't know why, but it's just that way. Uh, rock, water, fire, all get hit neutrally by ghost. I think fire ghost or fire dark is just a perfect neutral coverage. Sorry, sometimes it just... Um, that's enough for Bronzong. That might tank one hit. It doesn't exist anymore. I deleted it. Alright, so Bronzong is pretty defensive, but it's not gonna survive a strong style overheat. Yeah, it got absolutely melted. And sure now it hits me with extra sensory. And another one should really just do this. I mean, maybe not, but who knows, it's not gonna kill me. Oh yeah, it just got melted. The extra XP candy I get from everyone uh, can be used to level up Rowlet and Oshawott. It's pretty useful. There's a lot of satchels on the map, as you'll notice. And while I could collect those, there's no need for it. I can catch basically every evo fully evolved Pokemon, or I already have the items I need to do so, uh, to evolve them. Something like the Linking Cord for Machamp, the Magma Riser for Magmodo, which I already have one of those, so I don't even need that anymore, and all that stuff. I think the only one I need is Gliscor, but that's in the Highlands, and so I can catch that. I could, of course, just level a lot of Pokemon to like, I don't know what level, quite easily. I think there's a way to level the Pokemon easily. Um, the bandits, oh yeah, now that we have the steel plate from, or the iron plate, I don't know, we can open the door, which is cool because normally you'd need the Regis, and the Regis aren't in this game. Funnily enough, in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, I think Platinum, or was it just Platinum? You needed to get the actual Regis from Gen 3 into your game, which could be quite annoying. So, with Graveler, whatever, Glalie. So there's some very rare Pokemon I haven't gotten yet, sure, and some of the legendaries haven't been obtained too. Also, sometimes I don't understand why some attacks just have like two have to have two drawbacks instead of just one. For example, I think Overheat and Draco Meteor are the same base power and have basically gotten the same effect. Leaf Storm and there's another one I don't know. Maybe there's another one. Oh, there it is. A Leaf Storm has the f same effect too. Drops your special attack by two stages, but in turn is really strong, but it has a like 10% miss chance, I think. Or does Leaf Storm even- can Leaf Storm miss? I don't know. Well, that's Regigigas. Vision of it in motion. Unfortunately, Regigigas doesn't move much. Regigigas in competitive Pokemon, oh yeah, you'll see I have a lot of Pokemon registered, but I'll complete their Pokedex entries, don't worry. Can't be caught. So Regigigas in competitive Pokemon, first of all, is absolutely horrible.
because it has slow start. Having its speed and attack for the first five turns it's on the field. Oh sorry, did I say the first five turns? For five turns when it enters the field. Meaning that every single time you swap out Regigigas, these turns are reset. Regigigas isn't released in Gen 9, so we don't know if that mechanic still applies. But in general, it is assumed that it does. Sure, after five turns, Regigigas is an absolute monster. I'll just look up its stats. I think it has like 160 attack and a giant HP stat, so it can tank like a lot of moves. Uh, I don't know. It's not only very strong, but also quite fast for such a giant Pokemon. So, if I type in Regigigas... So, its attack is 160. It has 110 in each defensive stat. So, defense, special defense and HP. 60 special attack, which makes it just not good. Oh yeah, and also if we don't get lucky with that, we will lose. Woo, 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 woo. And it has a 100 base speed stat, which is just fine. That's absolutely insane, by the way. Hooray. Wow, 10,000 XP, nearly. That's crazy. Also, it's shiny is pretty good. Just its ability is horrible. The blank plate. We got the normal type plate. Um. All right, that's the last one. Except not quite. Yeah, yeah, I'll. Get my Pokedex done as soon as possible. Alright, I still remember one money farming strategy. Can we port out of here? Yo. That's got to do with the bandits. Uh, hold on. Alright, this just says craft Pokeshi dolls. Sells for 1000 a piece. Not bad, but wood isn't that common. Star pieces and comet shards made using colored shards and stardust. Oh, great. I, uh, huh. <laughs> <clears throat> I kind of sold all the Stardust I have. So, yeah. It might go over the table for a lot, but... The Misfortune Battles. Right, here it is. I'm just looking that up while I'm playing. Ah, okay. Here's a map. I might not blend that in, but it's basically for the Obsidian Fieldlands, where the bandits are, or where they can be. Survey report. You caught one Pokemon. Here, have a thousand dollars. Imagine you had to tame a pigeon and got a thousand euros for that. I just... Tame all the pigeons, honestly. Alright, whatever. <sighs> Time to go back. Basically, the bandits drop four nuggets upon being defeated. And they're not strong. In fact, they're really, really weak. Oh yeah, I also have a lot of alpha Pokemon I still haven't used. So, I want all the starters on my team. Mmm... Although I have already, I mean, those this team is not that strong. I might just level Oshawott and Rowlet off screen, cause now I have to prepare for 
you know, some other stuff. Uh, we have to fight Kamado at Prelude Beach. And his Pokemon are, I think, level 65. Or even 70. So, we don't stand a chance. So, apparently the first bandit is between Deer Track Path and Deer Track Heights. The second one is... Uh, I don't know where. Alright, let me just look that up on the map. So, Deer Track Path and Deer Track Heights on this corner. The second one is further down somewhere around here, across this small patch of uh, trees. The third one can be down here next to those three trees that look like a Korok formation from Breath of the Wild. Sadly, these markers aren't shown on the map. Like, you have one marker that's really shown, and the other ones aren't. Also, I'm not doing all the side quests, because that's a lot of work. So... Alright, we are close. Yeah, I can remember one of them being here, potentially. But they are apparently not. So, we... Uh, just use Braviary. And turn to the exact location that the next one can be at. Oh, this controller has an attached um, cross instead of the four separate buttons that the normal Switch Joy-Cons have. Oh, it's an Alpha Stani. So we could just turn around, check the map every few seconds. Basically, the bandits can appear in every location, but it doesn't matter. Oh, hold on. Okay, so, no one's there too. But while I'm here, I can just take out the big alpha parasite. That's gonna give us a few XP. Also, Teflosion can just one-shot that. Just gets grilled. It's only level 30, so it doesn't give that much XP, but it gives an uh, XP candy M. And the whole reason why you want to be grinding against the bandits is because they not only give a butt ton of XP, I think if you get lucky, you can get up to 10,000 per battle for one Pokemon, and the others get like 5 to 6, 7,000. Um, okay, hold on. Could have sworn they were here. Um, okay, that's weird. Hold on, what does the guide say? They appear randomly. Says so more comprehensive map here. Um, this one's close to these. Behind some rocks. That's charm. The second one is. Whoops. Over at the trees. Right at some rocks. Clover. And coin is underneath. You know, somewhere. So, exactly where I am now, that should be Clover. So, I probably missed one of them. Of course, I won't just... Wait, are those this? Yeah, okay. I think those are the rocks that's supposed to... Uh, where one of them is... Oh! See? I told you. They'll actually notice you from quite the range. And they'll be close to that, apparently, but not, you know, exactly at that location. Alright. Bandit Charm. She's actually the one who gives up the most XP. She has a ride on. While that's strong, it you know, it just crumples to any special water type move or grass type move, so I just have something like Rosa Raid or I don't know any water type Pokemon. You can even have Bibarel kill it in one shot. 
And sure, it sucks to get your Typhlosion nearly knocked down by Bulldoze, but you know, Shadow Ball just two shots it, and the higher your level, the more likely it is just to one shot, so you know. And then she sends out Gengar, and as long as that thing doesn't go to go first, you know, it just uses Hypnosis most of the time. And if you get lucky, you break through and one-shot it, because Gengar is very frail on both sides of the spectrum. And that's it. She'll just be mad on at herself, and that's about 3000 XP for all of your Pokémon. And a lot more for your leading Pokémon. And, well, sure, that's good and all. That's not all. You get four nuggets for each bandit you've defeated. I have to look... I do think that only one appears at a time and you'd have to reset. So that was just basically like how you could encounter them. But I of course won't grind like 20... Uh, won't grind that one out 20 times. Just so I have like enough money. By the way, each nugget gives you, uh, I think, whoopsie, uh, what, 5,000 poker dollars? So if you have four nuggets, that's 20,000. And that means that after only five um, successful, whoops, a Burmy. I don't want to obliterate that right now. So after only five successful, um, Banded raids, I guess. You have already gotten 100,000 Poké Dollars, which is quite good. Of course, you can also catch Pokémon and sell items and whatnot. I'll just get going now. I won't end the part right now, surely. But I will just piece together an overpowered team right now. And, you know... That'll help me defeat Kamado. It's gonna be very important that I have a strong team later on. Because while I like my team, I do really want to have like a very good team. Alright. Now he has basically gotten everything you need. Pokeballs, it's like Ultra Balls, Gigaton Balls. No, he actually doesn't have Gigaton Balls. You still have to make those terms yourself. You can sell like these nuggets. 40,000, so each brings you 10,000. That's even better. Oh, and by the way, um, that's a lot of XP, right? So you can go to this guy who will start selling you quite overpriced XP stuff, but the XP can be large. It's actually quite fair at 18,000. And while that just ate all my money, I can just go back and grind against like two of the bandits and I'll have my money back. So, now we'll have to think. Which of these Pokemon is strong enough to be kept on the team and which can be switched out? So I have a Grass Fighting type in Hisurian... Um, Zorak, I wanted to say no. Um, Decidueye that I wanted on the team, so Lilligant is out. I think... Sneasel is just the best choice here. It's fast, it's quite strong, and it has a sword stance. And just like that, you can level up your Pokémon by like, I don't know how much. Alright, so... Oh yeah, we also have to um, buy some stuff. Oh, damn it. That's... These mechanical things are the Rodom appliances, because Rodom can take on different forms. In-game, these forms all have the same stats, but they have different typings. I think... I think since Gen 5, they all have completely different typings, but I don't know. So, okay, now for the team creation. So, while these Pokémon are cool, and I really like them, I really have to put together a strong team. Hisurian Decidui is, of course, on the team. I mean, look at its stats. It's extremely strong. And its defensive stats aren't even half bad. Decidui is... 
as in its base form. Quite weird as it's just like, you know, it's kind of balanced but not good enough. Like all of his sets are decent but not good enough. Sadly we can't search by level, which is really stupid for some inapparent reason. Of course I have that level 70 Alpha Glade, but that's another fighting type so I think I shouldn't take that in. I could put a Legendary on my team, like or Lucario. Level 70 Gardevoir shouldn't be too bad. I mean it's Fairy and it has Moonblast, Aura Sphere and it can learn Psychic and recover so that's good. Um, while Gudra and Overquill would be good, those aren't really that strong. So I'd rather have... I don't know. Do I have a rock or... So I'd rather have like Alpha Rhyperia on the team. And the last one... Let's see, do I have another Alpha Pokemon that's really strong? Um, sure I have Alpha Lopani, but that's level... 40. Wait, wasn't there a super strong Pokemon? <gasps> I know which one we're getting. Okay, so Rhyperia is going back because I know what Pokemon we are definitely getting here. That Pokemon is Garchomp. Okay, I'll take Heatran on the team because he's cool. And while he does overlap with his fire typing, fire steel is just invaluable defensively. D do you say invaluable? I mean, it's really good. Okay, I'll just stop using fancy words. It's just really good. So, the Snowlands, or Icelands, I don't know, hold a very special Pokemon, Garchomp. Garchomp is insanely strong in every game it's appeared in since its inception in Generation 4. It's massive HP... Oh, okay, I just apparently, you know, didn't go that way. It's massive... HP? No, bullshit, attack. It's massive 130 attack, is backed up by a 102 speed stat, ensuring that it at least gets one hit off. It also has decent bulk, and it has like pretty good abilities too, I think. One of its abilities is Sand Veil, and then it also gets Rough Skin. That doesn't sound too, get, uh, too bad, and while abilities aren't in this game, its stats are still great. And you know, Sand Veil makes the opponent's moves miss 20% of the time if you are in a sandstorm. And Rough Skin lets the opponent take recoil damage upon uh, using contact moves. Which is pretty good, actually. Yeah! <laughs> let's go! Okay, let's look for it. I still don't know where it is. I think it's like above. I should stop saying like. That's a bad habit. Really bad habit. I think it's above the diamond settlement. I don't know though. So, Garchomp is extremely strong. Oh yeah, we can still fight against Adam and Iridia, but I really don't wanna. So, whatever. Um, it's on a high point, so it's not here. I think it might be somewhere over there. I might just have to look in the Pokedex. Um, hold on, Alabaster Icelands, Rufflet, Brookmite, Glalie, oh yeah, if I just saw it alphabetically I might be able to look for that. Gibble, wait a second, G Graveler, G A, Graimiao, Geodude, Gengar, Gardevoir, Glade, Gabite, Frostas. I haven't found it yet, wait a second, I can just look for, um, Hold on. I can just look for where it Clamber Claw Cliffs. Alright, sorry for the wait. Maybe I'll cut that out. Who knows? Wait, where are Clamber Claw Cliffs even? Are those. I mean, it's stupid. Are those not listed here? Glacier Terrace, Lake Acuity, Pearl Settlement, Hearts Crag. Uh. Apparently not. I speak arena. It's just warp here. That'll give us a good vantage point from where we can fly. But I know it's close. I know it's somewhere on the edges. And 
Of course, Garchomp is also a Dragon Ground type, meaning he has basically gotten perfect coverage. Oh yeah, and he also gets Fire type moves to cover for Steel types, which is pretty great, considering that you know Garchomp is a Dragon type, which is normally walled by fairies, not the other way around. I mean, a Dragon type walling fairies is literally non-existent. It's not for Amber Palm. It's not too important. Ah, it really pisses me off that Alphas just knock you off uh, or knock you down every time. Oh, that's a Blissey! I wanna defeat that right now. Gives me some extra XP. And that's why I took Sneasler into the team. It basically outspeeds everything in the game, or like at least most of the things. And while I could just fill my team with legendaries, that'd be kind of boring and I mean. Wait, there's another one? Do they just keep spawning here? I mean, imagine if they did, though. You could just throw in a strong attacker. Like Sneasler. Teach it close combat. And Sneasler just gained 7000 XP from that one battle. Okay, that's cool. That's why technically Blissey is better to farm. But there's no real way to farm Blissey except the Alpha one in the Obsidian Fieldlands or going here. And while there is a small chance that one respawns, it doesn't automatically do that. Wait, isn't it up here? Yeah, I found it! Great stuff. So now, of course, it'll notice us and be quite mad and literally break the earth apart. And this is the literal strongest Pokemon you can find in the wild. No legendary, no mythical, nothing can match its level at 85. And on top of that, it even looks awesome. I mean, who doesn't like Garchomp, right? This thing is amazing. Also, Gibble is, a, is quite the round boy. And I really, really like him, so let's just get that and got it. I know I already got one, but you know, it's fine. If you take on really strong alpha Pokemon, they give you a lot of XP too, so that's fine. So now we've got our team assembled. Typhlosion, Sneasler, Decidueye, Gardevoir, Heatran and Garchomp. Gives us near perfect type coverage and only one overlapping type. Which is, well, Heatrans and Teflosh's fire typing, which, by the way, is not that bad. Fire is surprisingly adept at just being a pretty good type. That's honestly not how you say it, but I don't care. Fire is a pretty good type on its own. Offensively, fire is only resisted by, like... Okay, it's resisted by four types. Rock, fire, dragon, water. Which isn't that great, but combine it with most types, say, I don't know, electric. It's like... Fire Fighting is good, Fire Psychic is good, basically every type. So Fire Dragon, for example, is very really good offensively, Fire Ice is not that good offensively, Fire Electric doesn't cover Dragon, but Fire Dark and Fire Ghost are really good. Fire Dragon and a coverage move, say, I don't know what, Ground, since most Pokemon get Ground type moves, is really just pretty great. Defensively, fire types are pretty good too, since they resist quite a few common or important types. Steel, bug, fire, grass, ice, and fairy. Ice is a great um, offensive typing. Fairy is just the best type of all. I mean, not anymore. Maybe steel they throwed it, but fairy is still pretty good. Um. Oh wait, is this guy? Does he have a side quest? Oh yeah, here my Teflosion that I carried through the game. Yeah, I'm not gonna do every side quest. I don't have the time for that before, um, well, the big one releases. AKA, you know, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That's gonna be a huge game. Technically the best XP farming method is just to farm XP against the bandits, get the money, uh, and then sell a bunch of nuggets. 
I think I've heard that you can get up to 500,000 polka dollars or even more, I don't know though, per hour for from the bandits. Honestly, this team is quite good for like Sinnoh standards. It has three Hisurian Pokemon in there. I mean, the Gardevoir is surely isn't from Sinnoh, but Heatran and Gauchamp are, so whatever. I'll let it slip. That's probably also a better, a cooler team. I just had to throw everything in. Alright, so now for the big one of this part. The last plate we need to collect. Preload Beach, the other place of beginning. Now is not the time for words. Face me in battle. Wait, can't you face him as often as you like? Oh damn, he leads off of Golem. Alright. Oh, his level team is level 65, so it's good I slept on some good Pokemon. Yeah, and fire is only weak to ground, rock and water. So if you have a fire flying type... No wait, not fire normal. Fire steel is only weak to fighting ground and water. The CGI is pretty huge and Leaf Blade should kill it. And it looks cool in the Sicilian form too. But if you have, interestingly, Fire Flying, which is, you know, known for its quadruple weakness to Self Rock. If you take the rock Quad Rock weakness away, Fire Flying actually only has two weaknesses in Water and Electric, and has six resistances, two of them being Quad Resistance in Bug and Grass. A resistance to fighting steel, fire and fairy, and an immunity to ground. Fire Flying is a decent defensive typing. Uh oh. Alright, this is dry. But I think steel fire is really great defensively. Considering that it is resistant to normal flying psychic dragon, quad resistant to four, no, five types, bug, steel, fairy, grass, and ice, and, own, and immune to poison. And I mean, Heatran has good enough bulk to survive a few hits. Heatran is honestly pretty cool, even though it's not really... I don't know why Heatran appeals to me in the way it does. I mean, it's just a legendary beast that lives in a volcano, or in volcanoes to be said. And it has a pretty good move pool. It's really tanky, fast and strong. Yeah, um, uh, no wait, it's not fast. So Heatran has a 130 special attack, 106 in both defenses, 91 HP, 90 attack and 77 speed, which is good. Sure, it's not great, but it's good enough to make it work. Oh yeah, and for Garchomp's stats, we have, of course, the 130 attack, 108 HP, which is quite a lot considering it's an offensive dragon type. Its defense is 95, its special defense is 85, and its special attack is 80, but it can still use Fire Blaster to the higher base power. Oh, he has quite a few... Oh, he... Uh-oh. Yeah, that's gonna knock us out. I was expecting to lose some Pokémon. Oh, Mega Godchamp's shiny looks good. Alright. Typhlosion time. Yeah, Mega Garchomp is just over the top. Sadly, it loses like 10 speed. But that doesn't matter, it's still cool. Basically, I threw this team together because I really like the Pokemon, not because they're like pretty good. 
I mean, they are extremely powerful. That's not to be doubted, but I really like these Pokemon in general. I mean, Hisuian Typhlosion is just generally my favorite starter of the Hisuian ones. Alright, we won. And that's it. 12,000 XP. If you can defeat him with just like off a guard jump, all your team gains a quite a bit of XP. That's pretty good. Have this. That's the fist plate. Alright. When we set foot, we found on here, we found that plate. It clearly held some kind of power, so I kept it safe. I find it fitting that it should end up with you now. Perhaps something is guiding us. Indeed, it must be so. Huh. I think it would be more appropriate to call this region Sinnoh. Ah, I have no right to say this, but we are truly fortunate to have been able to count you among the Survey Corps ranks. If you had not joined us, we would have fallen. We would have lost our home, our hope, and our future. Now then, carry on with your survey work. The Pokémon need to be registered in the Pokédex. <laughs> the Plate of Prelude Beach has been complete. And now we have gathered all the plates that Kogida has told us about. Well, I think soon our adventure will come to an end. I will perhaps catch some Pokemon, complete some Pokemon off camera and all, but most of the story will be completed here. So thank you for watching, stay healthy and stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.